It's Cash vs Trash, the finale. That's right, people. It's the very reason that we both cashed and trashed our hatchbacks. Now, this was not just about quarter mile times because we didn't want to live our lives a quarter mile at a time knowing that for those 24 seconds we were free. This was about getting cars that could be street registered but also get some hectic times at the track. Which is exactly where we are heading today. This is the day we've all been waiting for, my friends. It's the day where we put our cars to the test. Do you need to spend the cash or can you make your car out of actual garbage? Now, we've tried to keep it as fair as possible. We've had the same tyres and now we are going to get a wheel alignment to set up perfectly for the track. Then at the end of the video, we'll reveal the final track times once we've had our race plus how much we actually spent. We're going to check that the cars actually drive in a straight line and then speak to Andre, our suspension expert, to find out the best way to set them up for the track. So step number one, typically with any car that will come through the door, is we want to look at it. So we want to see what's adjustable, what are we allowed to play with, yep. can we mess around with the heights, uh, can we mess around with the camber and the tow. And then from there, essentially, we just do a couple little tests, with the, especially with the ride height and things like that, and see how the alignment reacts to different uh, conditions, I guess. The very first step is to set tyre pressures. Then all four wheels are set up on the alignment machine so we can see where we're at. The left-hand side is at minus one degree of camber. The right-hand side is minus 0.9. And as far as the toe is concerned, it's all within half a mil. Uh, half a mil uh, towing in, so good. not terrible at all. I good. think it's, that's quite good for a solid uh, rear end. Yep, and so the front, although it probably tells a different story. Yeah, look, the front is out a little bit more uh, than we'd like. I mean, the left-hand side is uh, almost half a degree, whereas the right-hand side is about 0.1, 0.2 of a degree. And this is camber you're looking at here? Correct, yeah, that is camber. Um, the right-hand side uh, tow is a little bit further out than yeah. the left-hand side, which may have an effect, a slight effect on yeah. the camber reading, so yeah. obviously we'll, we'll have a look at that when we start adjusting. So obviously we have and worked on a whole heap of these. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, see how the alignment reacts with different ride height changes. So raising the car now, we've seen that essentially it starts with, uh, you know, the car started with about two mil odd of tow out and then at its full extension, it's come down to about half a mil of tow so out. coming in as you go higher. Exactly, so the car is towing in as we go up, which means in the middle of the corner, it's essentially going to do the opposite. Um, so based on that information, now I know, okay, statically, I need to give it maybe a little bit of tow out, which means in the middle of the corner, it'll uh, uh, tow out again a little bit more to one, one and a half mil, kind of where, what I'm aiming for for this particular uh, geometry. All right, the Purge Bro is done. There's not a whole lot of adjustability, so that was fairly quick and easy. Now it's time for that car to go in the bin where it belongs and we'll bring in the Swift. We'll try and get the setup and the alignment as close as possible to make it fair. So. Uh, Let's bring in the fast car. The coilovers on my Suzuki Swift were much more expensive than the coilovers on the Peugeot. And as such, they offer more features and more adjustability. But because I want to try and keep everything as fair as possible, I've asked the guys at DNA to try and match Marty's car where possible. This may be a decision that I come to regret later, but it means that I won't be giving myself a significant track suspension setup advantage compared to the Purge Bro. The heights are checked, and then tyre pressures are done, and then it's onto the alignment. With all of that done, it's time for the final battle. We're back to where this story kicked off a few months ago, Ludnam Raceway, to see how much faster we can go with cash and how much faster we can go with trash. You may already have a favourite of who you hope will win this race, but it's important to make one thing clear. These cars are both the underdogs. Cars that not many people take seriously. Cars that you can buy for less than $6,000 and cars that outside of Japan and France are often laughed at when referred to as sports cars. This ain't no Lotus and this is certainly no Porsche. These are normal everyday cars that we've grown to love while we've been working on them. And today, on the battlefield, one will stand mighty and victorious in the ultimate battle to decide whether you need to spend up on your mods or if time, sweat and ingenuity can be just as fast. We're hitting the track alongside a bunch of much faster cars and the winner will be whoever can get the fastest track time. It's all down to the clock and we're starting with the Swift. This is it, back at Ludnam, Herzo time tyres warmed up and then it'll be battle on people will be battle on get some heat into these tyres feels so much better in a seat wow feels great all right there is the 
Persbro in front of me. And we are going for time, people. We are going for time. All right. We're on. Let's go. behind me this seat is amazing seat and tires people seat and tires the only thing you need total game changer this is amazing I'm just held exactly where I feel like I need to be I got a couple of car lengths on the purge bro already and I am tight 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 in this seat this is amazing These tyres are going to warm up and get better and better. I'm not sure if I need the whole race suit thing. But I'm going to get a time anyway. Sub one minute is what I would like to see. 59, sub a minute. I'm happy with that. That's great. Very happy with that. confidence of knowing that I'm in the seat and I'm not going to get thrown out is just amazing. Along the back here, just being able to hold on, in fact not just hold on, wind on, wind on some more power is amazing. The Purge Bros is nowhere to be seen. I'm sorry people but it looks like maybe spending some money on your car is the best way of going faster because I can't even see him behind me, like he is nowhere to be seen. Meanwhile, this is what was happening in my car. Out onto the track. Perfect day for it. Green light, people. Seats feel good. Not race car seat good, but good. Already feels like it's got more grip. A little bit of uh, broken plastic and stuff floating around in there, but nothing big, so we're all fine. Let's see the Swift coming up behind me. All right, here we go. Let's get into it. Sounds so good. That feels 
good. Oh man, something my seat's broken. So when I brake really hard, the seat just goes forward, which is shit. It means I just can't brake heavy, like I have to be so careful. So I brake heavy, it'll just jerk the seat forward. But the car's feeling great now. That limp mode was a bit weird. Best time so far, still looking pretty healthy. Just need to work out what's going on with this seat. Maybe you can have another go. Look at see this. For some reason, the locking mechanism just doesn't work. So that sucks. It's gonna have to like put a bolt through or something to stop it sliding forward. That's poo. Let's see if I can show you what's going on here. Probably should have stuck to the original seats. <laughs> Would have got a better time. The time's looking pretty good though, but yeah, I don't know what the go is with that. Chair's just broken. Get what you pay for. All right, so the owners of this car and this car are absolute legends. And they're gonna loan me some stuff to hopefully try and fix it. I tried to bolt the seat in, but it's not gonna happen. I just need to do something a bit more track ready. Let's see if I can strap the seat in. Yeah, cool. Perfect. What else am I gonna do? So we've done a couple of laps. Uh, we've each had a couple of issues. We have got some times. So we're not going to reveal them yet because we think there might be a little bit more yeah. in it. Mixed results. Um, the car felt really good. The first lap or two felt good. Then I had a check engine light and it went into limp mode. So I was just going nowhere. Um, I stopped and started the car again on the track. The power came back, which was great. Then I had an issue with my seat where I couldn't stay in it. So I still got an okay time considering, but I, I do feel like I have some unfinished business. Uh, my like ESC and all that stuff was activated and I couldn't turn it off because of my like hands device. I couldn't, I didn't know where it was. It turns out it was like down here and I couldn't turn around enough to turn that off. So I've also kind of got a little bit of unfinished business uh, yeah. and I came into a bit of a steam show as well and it's smelling like a train. So uh, I think the trick is now, um, I also had really high tire pressures, uh, higher than I think I need. It's so hot track today. We've just got um, we got a little bit of unfinished business and then we'll head back to our super garage and let you know the final numbers plus the final spend. All right, let's try this again. Feels nice, empty track. Not flying through the windscreen when I brake anymore. Happy days. Let's go for a time. Come on, little Peugeot. You're not fast, are you? Like not even a little bit fast. Tidy now. I don't know what's changed my driving or the distraction of having other cars around. It still feels alright. Whoa! It tried to bite me just then. It tried to bite me. I was getting a little bit greedy with my turn in. The backs do like to come around on these things. Come on, little Peugeot. Come on, little Peugeot. Come on, little Peugeot. Not really going that much faster, unfortunately. It feels like I'm doing alright. But I don't know that my times actually reflect it. So maybe the secret to a good time for me is a broken seat. Just, just chill it out on the corners a little bit. I think I'm going slower doing it though. Triple strip. Come on little car, come on little car. Oh, there go my brakes. There go my brakes. I might have just had brake failure actually. Oh no, they're good. I just cooked them I think. Well, that might be it people. I think there's gonna be a cool down because the pedal just went to the floor which means oiling brake fluid. And that shit's dangerous so gotta know when to get out of it as well. Oh yeah. My brake pedal just went completely soft after the fastest corner of the whole track. So I'm gonna get off the line, let it pass. Because that was sketchy. That most likely means brake fluid just boiled because the amount of heat I was putting into it. Uh, but I can still stop. I do have brakes, but the pedal's getting longer and longer and longer. So, little Peugeot. Get in well, mate. 
for the money. You cannot argue with that for the money, I'm telling you. I can argue with that for the money, and I'm about to. Here's what was happening in my car. Okay, let's go, little Swift, let's go. I'm not a race car driver, but I'm having a good time. There is a Porsche behind me. I'm sure he's going to be wanting to get past at any moment but I need to hang on to it because I need to get this lap time come on little swift this one's feeling good this one's feeling good let's go little swift it's Japan versus France let's go someone to chase. You ever find that when you're doing track days? I don't think I'm keeping up with this Cayman though. That's just wheel spin right there. <sighs> Temperatures are still looking okay. But I do have a check engine light on. Come on little Swifty, you've got it. Swift, let's go. With white smoke billowing out the back of my little Swift, the check engine light on and the brakes faded, my time on the track was done. I really did try my best using all of the abilities that I had to try and drive as fast as possible. And as I limped back to the pits, I hoped that my times would be enough to send that Peugeot directly back into the biggest bin that I could find. All right, everybody, it's time to reveal the final build price and the final lap times of these two vehicles. Who wants to go first? Uh, Let's go with budget first. Go budget? Yeah. With trash? Okay, so I spent about $3,000 on the car in terms of mods. I got $1,200 worth of tires, $1,000 worth of wheels. The tires were to keep it fair. The wheels were so I could fit the tires. $500 worth of coilovers, $100 worth of seats, 50 bucks worth of intake, and 50 bucks worth of exhaust, which adds up to six grand. Okay. $6,000. So not nothing, but a lot of fun to be had for that money. Uh, so my car for the car and the modifications has come in at $25,000. <laughs> but for that kind of money, you also expect Whoa. to see the performance benefit yep. that that car cannot do. Because what are you doing? You are buying performance. And so now it's time to reveal the track times. This is probably where YouTube's gonna insert an ad, like right now, or hopefully they won't. It's time, Martin. How did, just right before we get there, I'm not meaning to stall. How did it feel on the track? It felt great. I mean, it, it got really hot. It was a bit steamy and stuff at the end, but it's, um, the seats were, I mean, I reckon if you could just do like wheels and tires and seats, that's a game changer. Like they felt amazing. How did yours go? Um, except for the stuff that broke. So when it went into limp mode, that sucked. When the seat wouldn't stay put, yep. that sucked. Uh, but once I had that sorted, it was great. Eventually it also got hot yes. and overheated. So. To be expected, we were really giving him a good thrash. All right, so Martin, I'll Let's tell you how fast time. I went. No, you tell us how no, fast no, you, you go. went. Okay. You go. Uh, so my best lap in the Swift Sport was 58.45 seconds. So a total of two seconds faster than my time uh, for a cost of well, no, 18,000. I'm basically spending $9,000 per second of faster lap time. Right, so for my $50 intake, $50 exhaust, $500 coilovers, and some wheels and tyres, 58.13. Peugeot's got it. Well done. 58.13. Well done to all the Frenchies out there. Uh, you got it. Uh, when it comes Racing to cash versus trash, 
Uh, in this case, it is trash all the way. So, <laughs> well done. Now, some people are probably going to be saying, hey, maybe you should swap drivers and do it. We have driven so many of the same cars yeah. over and over and over again. Our lap times are very, very similar. So, we didn't have time to actually swap, but we can assure you, we can even link other videos down below. Our driving is very, very similar, like within milliseconds, usually. Yep. Yep. So, um, that's a big one for the that's Peugeot. a big one. And you might remember when we very first, the very first time we went to the track, like, I had a lot of fun yep. with a stock one. So you could spend the three grand or the seven or whatever, and for collectively $10,000, you can also have a great time with stock cars, but it was noticeably better having particularly the tyres. That's yep. the first thing I noticed straight away. The rest of the car, power-wise, okay, it sounded a bit louder. Was it making more power? Well, you saw the dyno results for yourself. Yep. But that is absolutely the thing to do. I reckon you buy whatever you can afford, put the best tyres you can get on it, and send it and just try and then build Go from and there. Go and have some fun. Absolutely. Uh, where is the difference in the performance? Uh, in my opinion, it's this. My car, as we saw, the intake made no extra power. I mean, I actually lost power, so that's gone, so it's got a stock intake on it. Yeah. Other than that, other than the setup, there's no actual performance benefit. So you, you would have seen on the dyno, the car's actually making the same power um, as it was before. Uh, I've got the same weight as factory, but then I've got the added weight of having the cage as well. A little bit less weight because of the seats, of course. We managed to pull out, I think, almost 100 kilos yeah, from the Purge Bro. You could so feel it. It's a, it's a huge it. difference, and so it's kind of like having one or two mates, depending on how much they weigh, not in your car. So really what we've done is got two cars that are kind of stock, added some weight to one, removed some weight from the other, yeah. put the tyres on, and the result is the result. I mean, incidentally, like, those control to get the coilovers in, I had to replace the control arms. Did, did that make help some time? I should probably add that to the cost of the car, so I had another $200, whatever they were. Yeah. Um, removing the weight made a huge difference. Um, equal tyres, again, huge difference. My performance mods for power, not really worth the time. Yeah. Really, if you look at those results, that's worth thinking about as well, if you're going to do the same thing. But stripping all that out now makes that, like, defectable in most places anyway because yeah. your interior is just gone so you now you have a car that's useful and you have a car that's way less useful. The other thing that's important as well in terms of your journey modifying cars and what your education is is how inspired you feel to actually keep working on the car so even though I lost this battle I'm really excited now about looking into brakes, looking into power, looking into ECU, getting a full exhaust. So I'm really excited to keep taking the car to another level. The question is, Martin, are you willing to do the same? I was going to say, on the other hand, I have now hit the limit. Even though I won today, this has so much more potential. The way the suspension is set up, what you can do with camber, what you can do with all these fine tuning adjustments, not being limited by the torsion rear end. I know the Peugeot guys out there are gonna be like, but you can do this and you can do that. And, but in terms of how easy it is and how fun it is to do it, it's now way more of a struggle to get that to the next level than it is for that. That car itself is also rubbish. That car's actually quite nice. Yeah. Well, so this is where you also consider, okay, I've had my fun with this. If you then sell that car and get your money back or a lot of it back, stick that in the bank, add a little bit more, you could upgrade to another chassis or another kind of car that also the sky's more limit and grows with you, whereas this might end up being limiting. Well, I think it's also what we're talking about here is potential. And so right now we're kind of feeling like your interest and your enthusiasm whether the car has or not has kind of hit a limit. Mine is just beginning, so we are going to be seeing more Swift. The real question is now, though, what happens to the Purge Bro?